<clears throat> what is up, guys? The Nerd Wars. Welcome back to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with your of course, the Skyrender. And this time, of course, we are in the TBU Wixis against, of course, the Tennessee Tynamos and Ethan. And now, before going into the battle, I'm going to be completely honest and kind of spoil it. But the reason for it is because this is a s something else. This is not your average battle by any chance of the imagination. Uh, this is a very, very, very different game in the fashion that it doesn't matter what Ethan prepped for or what I prepped for. The game itself just turned against me in such a fashion that it's just not worth trying to um, <laughs> to define it. It's... It's a very haxy battle and a very, very one-sided battle. So I'm going to narrate for stuff that matters. I'm going to, of course, uh, tell you guys you know, what my initial thoughts were during the process. But trust me, guys, there is no outcome throughout this matchup where I will win. And it's pretty much decided turn two. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but this is one of those things. Like, I don't want to build up something that's not going to eventually deviate to something else. This is a super one-sided battle. Though um, the hacks themselves are funny enough that I definitely I would have I would enjoy this battle much much more had it not been an important game such of course a league battle but you know like I said it's something else it's definitely is me against the game and Ethan is its receiver so with of course further ado let's watch this train wreck really <laughs> of a battle. So, from the get-go, I decided to lead off with my Jellicent. The main issue here was that Jellicent was able to, of course, with Taunt in mind, be able to put, of course, Spikes off the field. Torkoal cannot Shell Smash or go for Self Rocks himself. So, Taunt is my number one play, and he starts with Torkoal, which is okay in my book. I am completely fine. And I'm gonna go for that very, very safe Taunt. Solar Beam does, at, at best, roughly 40% if he decided that he's somewhat offensive. He's gonna switch out, not gonna go and stay in, which is fair, as uh, I'm gonna taunt the Gudra. Now, Gudra here either going to have Power Whip or have Thunderbolt. I figured God of War would be my safest switch in, no matter what, really. As Thunderbolt, turn two, is gonna, of course, paralyze me, which is great because I'm Scarfed, and I'm gonna synchronize, of course, the paralyzation, as I will lock myself into Thunderbolt, predicting the Skarmory. So, uh, at first it looks okay, I do get fully paralyzed, so that's great, as he gets a number of spikes, as I get a paralyzed, another turn, which is awesome, this is definitely what you need. Uh, so, turn 4, getting fully paralyzed yet again, <laughs> as he gets another layer of spikes, so yay! As eventually I will break free and actually get the paralyzed, or get the thunderbolt. Now, it should be said, I mean, they reduce it so you can only be fully paralyzed 25% of the, of, the, of the time, which makes this just so awesome, so great, so unnerving, really. So, <laughs> here's the thing, he's most certainly gonna switch out. So I'm gonna switch in Mythos, predicting Gudra to come in, since he clearly knows I'm Scarfed, even if Paralyzed even does that speed. So, at this point, we're at somewhat well, actually. Sideshock should be close of killing him. And Thunderbolt should do at best around 90, so I should be able to soak this really well. As uh, another Paralyze there. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. I see you, game. I see you. So at this point, I, I will be honest, the game by default, because I can get fully paralyzed, is completely over. I actually went for a heat wave here, predicting the Skarmory to come in. It's, um, it's wonderful. It's really, it's just, mmm. <laughs> uh, look, I'm still going, like, the spikes themselves do not actually push me back that much harder. I mean, spikes are issue, yes, but at the same time, I do have extra who could rapid spin, so I'm not finding it particularly big of an issue. Though getting, of course, me for the Paralyzed is definitely one of the bigger ones. I had Healing Wish in my Guard War. The purpose was to, somewhere down the line, be able to KO either Gudra or Sukin with Sigalith, or, of course, getting that heavily damaged as I hopefully and eventually, of course, would have been able to go for Healing Wish to, of course, get Sigalith back on track. Now, that, of course, is not what happened as Sigalith falls to the Raybird. Uh, now, I do decide to go for Thunderbolt here as Frostlass. He does switch in, of course, his Torkoal. Um, there was no reason for me of actually switching out. I'm just gonna go for Spikes, hoping that he goes for Self Rocks or anything like that. That's, that is exactly what happens. So that's okay. We do get two layers of Spikes, but I really, really needed three. And I'm gonna define that why that would have been more important later in the game as uh, he's just gonna KO me with the flamethrower. 
I'm gonna now set in extra real. I could go for Earthquake, but I kind of figure, since we haven't seen Leftovers afterwards, that he's gonna be Sugar Berry. And uh, if that's the case, then I'm not gonna be able to KO him with, uh, of course, an Earthquake. And trust me, that means I have to Rapid Spin. That's my number one play. I could have switched into Ranitar, but I really don't want that residual damage towards Ranitar. Mainly for one reason, and that is just that I am not able to take a quick attack after I'm being down or whittled down from, of course, the Mega Pincers. I don't want to risk any kind of residual damage towards me. So with that said, um, I'm actually going to go for directly for a Skull here, I do believe. So he could actually have gotten the rocks up again had he so desired, since I didn't go for a Taunt. Now, I will decide to go for a Taunt here because it felt kind of necessary. Uh, I really just... I didn't want to see a Coal Mine variant of, of course, this Pokemon, or what do you call him? Uh, the Sukun, but actually shows me that he's toxic, showing me that it probably is a more offensive variant, most likely with Scald or Ear Slash, which my initial thought. Uh, mainly Ear Slash for, of course, my Bustle, which I didn't bring to the match itself, but... Yeah, this is definitely a bit of a slower part, but at this point I'm basically going back and forth whether or not I should stay in or keep going for Skulls or just try to whittle him down. So eventually I kind of just wing it and just switch in my um, my Gardevoir. There was really no point of bringing Gardevoir, but I didn't have a really safe switching of bringing actually Tyranitar to this matchup. Uh, and quite frankly, I needed more damage towards this Pokemon because I really, really want to focus my... Uh, C-move um, on, of course, my Tyranitar, which is a Dragon Dance set for this specific matchup. Uh, I really want to just focus that to be able to do maximizing damage towards, well, anything else but the Sukun. I really just wanted wanted that damage output. I have Hidden Power Flying too, so it should do around 80% to Chest Knot, which basically means that no matter what I'm able to do with my um, Tyranitar, there is no way I'm coming out on top of this because Chestnut is able to live that hit and I need to be at plus one anyway to be able to speed of course and make a pincer. So with that said, I do believe I eventually will decide to sack up Guard War because Guard War was pretty much wasted turn one clearly and it didn't help that the game itself just kept on giving me all the salt it had to of course bring to me as I now eventually just sag uh, Elisa, of course, gonna to try to go for the wrap up with Tyranitar. I felt that this was my best play, really. I just, if I get one Dragon Dance up, I should be fine to be able to actually KO Suki with, of course, a Stone Edge, and then basically hope that I'm able to KO with Hidden Power Flying with, with of course, the Chest Knot, though I find it very unlikely. Since, of course, I just, I'm very clear, I think it's a very, very defensive set. Chest Knot just makes sense with that in mind. So I go to Rex, I'm gonna go, like I said there, directly for, of course, the um, Dragon Dance. He's as minus one, so I felt it could be likely he could switch out. I would have liked him to switch out. He does decide to stay in and goes, of course, for the Skull, as uh, this game has already shown me how well it and great it is and gets the burn, of course, first time he Skulls me, and I'm like, fuck it, it's the game we play, what else can I say? <laughs> so I'm just gonna speed up this last part, he did have access to Roar, but... Basically, these last, I do believe that's 15 turns or something like that, that is around here, is super boring. It's a very, 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 very boring section of me just ex exchanging moves that is not super effective. I do eventually go to my Tyranitar to go for the Continental Crush, basically to wrap it up, feeling a bit weird, as, um, or feeling a bit weird, kind of wrong, but, you know, I just wanted to showcase that that was my initial thought, that was my idea. Uh, as Chestnut comes in, I go for Dragon Dance over Hidden Power Flying, basically in case he wanted to be funny, as of course the Chestnut will wrap up the game. So, alright, you know, as stated, I did lose the game, and as you guys saw, there was really nothing I could have done here that would eventually lead to my, well, victory. Now, here's the thing, I really should say this, um, this matchup was definitely not in my favor, I really really needed to go out of my way to be able to win this matchup properly now outside of him not bringing raiko i'm pretty much on par with what he was gonna try to bring against me i was to some extent predicting skunk tanks as of course with uh, sucker punch you definitely could want to ko god of war or i mean uh, sigilith and of course poison jab ko god of war uh, but outside of that i really really was forced to play out of my way here to be able to win this matchup well and i really thought i did uh, the design of the team is definitely made in thought of me being able to sweep with Tyranitar late game. Uh, initial, of course, bring a residual damage towards course Chestnut. I needed actually Chestnut to come in twice on Spikes layer uh, to be able to secure a KO with Hidden Power Flying. 
uh, that doesn't transpire here and it's actually super super frustrating uh, Ethan of course did not get to showcase his initial ideas because the, the game itself just spoon fed him the victory um, and I definitely feel bad for Ethan in that fashion because I, he's definitely a very commendable battler and I don't think he needed the hacks to be able to showcase that he has what it took to actually defeat me. I'm definitely full agreement on that. It's very likely he would have won anyway, even though I'm pretty sure that I have least ideas to actually surprise him and hopefully force him out. Now, for my own sake, it is unfortunate the guard will get fully paralyzed. The spikes itself doesn't matter, but not being able to outspeed the things that matter, such as Gursuki and Gudra, um, Chestnod, um, Maya Pinsir with the scarf in mind, it does dent me quite heavily, and the same goes for Sigalif. Sigalif, of course, now paralyzed, he's not able to outspeed, of course, the things it needs to outspeed, and that's incredibly frustrated. Uh, the Skullburn, of course, Ranator, it doesn't matter in the ways that I wouldn't been able to KO Chestnut anyway, but actually missing out on that opportunity completely, yeah, that's pretty darn shitty, because I need to go for another Dragon Dance, and of course he had Roar. It's, um, it's just... It's a series of things not working, and uh, I really just needed to seal damage on Skarmory, on Gudra, and of course a little on Chestnut to sweep with that Tyranitar. And I, ah, by definition, the game kind of went my way, but the hacks just kept me back, um, and I, I couldn't do it. Um, so for the game itself, like I'm, I'm not mad at the game, but it is, like I said, unfortunate because it is a league match. It does kind of run heavily towards, of course, what we already created before this game. We are free for free, which means that we're, we are going to have a rougher time now making playoff. We need to win our two last matches, and the same goes for Ethan, no matter what. But minus five differential definitely pushing us back. We actually have a decent run with not losing quite much, but not winning too much either. But this was a big loss, and it does affect me very, very, very heavily. So, uh, while I will play my mass last two weeks games, you know, as well as I can, I really can't deny the fact that this is affecting me heavily enough for me definitely not being in a running for a playoff match anymore, a playoff position anymore. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really boring. Um, I definitely didn't like that outcome of it. Um, don't get me wrong, though, Ethan probably, as I said, would have won this match eventually, but he didn't need the hacks to prove that. And the same thing for me. I definitely wanted to showcase what I had in store for him. And not being able to do so because the game didn't like it. Yeah, it's, that's kind of shitty. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys. I hope... Guys. Guys. Yeah, um, I really hope you enjoyed this battle anyway. And um, like I said, don't be mad towards Ethan or like that. He's not affecting the hacks or anything like that in the game. It is what it is. It's a, I say it as Chaos, who is one of, who is our founder's moment. This was a very, very, very Pokemon-like battle. That's, that's pretty much a rundown of it. So anyway, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching, and, um, I'll see you next TV game against Sly. And we're gonna win that one. Pfft. We have to. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.